Because we care so deeply about the matter that is at stake. Yes, yes. But like a computer has default functions which it performs when instructions are not provided, our heart defaults to worry when we fail to instruct it according to God's word. Mm. Wow. So worry happens when we fail to adjust our perspective to what God says about our lives. This is no small thing, especially when it's avoidable. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that the test you are going through is not unique to you. God is faithful and will not let you be tested beyond what you can handle. With every test, He provides a way out so that you can stand up under it. Amen. Listen to what he says. He provides a way out so that you can stand up. That's why the word of God is not sympathetic to worriers. That is precisely why the absence of worry is such an amazing thing, such a powerful witness. It's like growing a second head. It's hard for people not to notice. The point of scripture is that for Christians, worry, like an evil thought or a bad word, is avoidable. Like an evil thought or a bad word, it might happen under extreme conditions, but should really be really, really rare. Wow. I'm stuck on really. <laughs> worry is a form of fear. Yes. It says to God, I don't trust you. Wow. Now that grieves God as it would any heavenly father. It says to the watching world, either that God is powerless or doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Both of which are slander. He isn't even, or it, even, or it says to them that he isn't even there. And, and that amounts to practical atheism. It also blinds us to the lessons he's trying to teach us by turning our gaze, our focus inward. Ever try to communicate with someone who's looking the other way? I don't know if you have a wife, your wives ever tried to communicate with your husband during the Super Bowl? It's a little difficult. Because his attention is focused in a different direction. And so it is with us sometimes when God is trying to speak to us through our troubles. That's why the language of this verse is so strong and absolutely non-negotiable. For example, take the word anything. Do not be anxious about anything. It refers to bad things that you fear might happen. Or good things that you fear might not happen. And it's all inclusive. No thing can happen or not happen that is excluded from the word any. And if, if we recognize this, we have a problem. Because Jesus said, the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few, few blows. But from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. Wow. Yeah. So if you know better, you got to do better. He also said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. And he said, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. All these verses are meaning that God holds you responsible for what you know. You might say, but brother, this is impossible. Hmm, well, after putting James, the brother of John, to death, Herod saw that it pleased the Jews. So he arrested Peter with the same intent in mind. Acts 12, 6 says that the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers and bound with chains. Now, I have a hard enough time sleeping on a place that is hard. And if I was bound with chains, that would make it even more uncomfortable. And if I was bound in chains, in a nasty, dirty, filthy, smelly place with stuff crawling around, I'd really not be sleeping. And if I was bound with chains on a hard, nasty, uncomfortable, filthy, nasty place with stuff crawling around the night before a kangaroo trial and my execution, then you know that I would be awake. Who would argue with Peter's right to worry, to be stressed out of his mind? But the guy was snoring. And that's what makes his sleep so remarkable. Was Peter made out of something different?